He is a doctor. He knows the patient dead. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we gon' bury him. Pleasant good evening to everyone here. This it is indeed my distinct pleasure and honor to be here with my wonderful colleagues sitting on this platform tonight and who will form the next government tomorrow after the ballots are counted. But I want to say to you this evening that I intend to spend a little time on Owen Seymour Arthur. Because one of the choices that you have to make tomorrow is whether or not you are going to be so blinking drunk to put him back in office against from this front. You are going to be Let me tell you how wicked this son of a bitch is. And I am making us bore with you like, you know that bear street, you can hear me from over there. When David Thompson went up to Hagger Hall and David Thompson dropped that check of $75,000 on him, that wasn't the whole truth. The whole truth gonna be revealed tonight. That wicked man, that wicked man, took a check that was drawn on CCB. It was drawn on the Sabbath of May, 2003. Written on CCB check to itself. And it was negotiated and cashed by Owen Arthur on the 21st of May 2003 as CCB is by down. The 21st of May 2003 was election day. Owen Arthur took the check and cashed the election day and put it in the account. But at all, two months before that, they scam and the other miscreants in the Barbados of a party went and gave CCB a contract, a bike to build the judicial center, something unheard of in Barbados. We normally give construction companies contracts to build buildings, not a bike. Are you going to understand what a vagabond and a bunch of crooks and criminals they are? This man, two months before he got the check from CCB, gave CCB Bank a contract to build the judicial center in Barbados. A bank, a bank, a bank, who ain't know nothing about building nothing. Nothing. Bank managers who ain't know nothing about a nail, a hammer got a contract and in return or another deposit seventy five thousand dollars in his bank account on the 21st of May 2003 CCB spike down so, come challenge my own that's the man I want to walk about up order I think that we forgot him we, he think that we forgot him. A hundred million dollars, eh, Chris? That in Greenland, I want none by the garbage. When I want that again? 
357 million dollars down in James. What I want that again. And when he realized that he could have made some money, he sells silver rock. We say John Family Hotel. He said it. He didn't sell where they court. Simon says family, land and look. I want to understand how serious these people are. He then turned around and sell his free house to the family of the Barbados Labour Party. There was the people who were about power and Barbados and all them things. Look, he sell the BNB. And I hope that God somebody string it up on the BNB. Let me explain to you why I am challenging him tonight about the sale of the BNB. And this is what bothering me every day. If we still own the Barbados National Bank, many of the projects that now we are struggling to get finance, the government would be able to get the money from its own bank. But we are struggling to get money from the Trinidadian banks because they don't care about you and me. Anyone of you who know because of the recession and who are having trouble repaying your loans, they are not going to work with you. They are not going to reduce the interest rate. They are not going to spread out the loan. That is one of the mistakes he made. He removed the flexibility that the government had in managing its public finances. And what they have done is every single senior manager in the Trinidadian. All the major decisions, all the locals go home. And I want to ask you a question tonight. If that happened with the BNB, who gonna buy transport board? When the Pioneer Dairy was up for sale, who bought it? When ICB came up to sale, who bought it? When BNB came for sale, who bought it? Who bought the Iraq cement plant? Who bought BSAT? Oh, Jesus, please, but I want to buy everything in Barbados. What are you going to give that man a chance to sell, uh, to sell CBC to Trinidadians? What are you going to let him sell to Trinidadians? What are you going to let him sell the Barbados to the oil company to Trinidadians? Look, let me tell you about the Barbados National. I'll come in a few minutes. Emergency. Can you get T1580 and XA267 um, out of Bethel Church? You have to move this in emergency. T1580 and XA267. Look, my problem with one after. And the Barbados Labour Party is that you have a choice to make tomorrow. And that choice is to whether you are going to allow or another to follow the same approach that was used by Romney and Ryan in Barbados. I have said to you already that Oinatha is a Republican. Tonight I call you a Republican because I am not too sure that he understand what he's doing. Let me explain. Let me reason together. Here, Minister Sigler found himself when the crisis struck. We lost $450 million in revenue. If you lost $450 million in revenue because of the crisis, I want you to answer the question. If you lost $450 million because of the crisis, and Oenada come and tell you that he can cut taxes and give back all the allowances, are you not going to have less money in the treasury? But they're going to worsen the conditions, but they don't understand them. I will that. If you cut taxes at a time when the revenue of the country is failing, you're going to worsen the situation in the immediate and short term or in a hospital. And I want to tell you tonight that that is the same thing that Romney and Ryan was telling Obama. Don't raise taxes, cut taxes across the board. Cut every tax. 
you even cut the taxes for the billionaires? And when Minister Sickness said, look, we want Barbadians to use common sense. The economy is losing revenue. We got to stop the slide. We then ask you to help us. And we raise taxes to make sure that we can send you school. Pay your wages and salaries. Keep the transport board working and all the services. That sacrifice that you made, do not squander that sacrifice by putting Owen out in the back in the office to accomplish nothing. Look, the other plank that Romney ran, ran on is called downsizing government. Owen and them downsizing government by statutory corporations, privatization. But the one thing about statutory corporations that bothers me now, because I heard it mentioned tonight about sending more people, but I want to speak to you on the Barbados National Oil Company. The Barbados National Oil Company stores your national strategic oil reserves. It now has two weeks of supply of diesel fuel, two weeks of supply of gasoline, and about 10 days of kerosene and aircraft fuel. I want you to answer me what sort of madman would want to sell the country's national strategic oil reserves and put it in the hands of the private sector. Anybody who has been a leader of a country that does not understand that the national strategic oil reserves of a country belong to the people in the case of a natural disaster. You cannot put it in the hands of the private sector, Owen. And you need to understand how dangerous what this man is saying is. But he's even more dangerous on this whole notion of the devaluation of the dollar. Let me explain. Right now, Barbados depends on England, the United Kingdom, for its tourists. England is in a recession. Three recessions in five years. In addition, Germany and France now in recession. So the whole of Europe in crisis. When we came to office, Minister said, we can tell you, we had 22 weeks of reserves. It fell to 16 weeks by December 2012. And don't take my word for it. Go and read the Central Bank last quarter report for 2012. Central Bank governor said, we lost $108 million in reserves. Alfonso Das from the BHTA said that the tourism contribution fell by 18%. You want to tell me that in a situation where your reserves are falling and Europe is a crisis and your major source market that you get tourists from is a recession, that that is the time to run down the little bit of reserves that you got. If you ever do that, you go to the IMF. And the, he did the same thing in Jamaica and destroyed the Jamaican economy. Not here, my man, going. Go, you blasted man. So tomorrow, tomorrow you must send a message to him. You did it in Jamaica, but you ain't doing it here. All right? What happened in Jamaica is you had to have a split up your head, up the bush. No. The risk of devaluation of the dollar is the singular most significant risk to all of us here tonight. Up to now, Jamaica and Guyana can't help the hole. And that Jack Rabbit won't put me in the hole. And what is even more ridiculous is this. Right now, our dollar is paid two Barbados dollars to one US. You do not want to see a Barbados where we have an exchange rate of 10 Barbados dollars to one US. Every single thing in this country they through the roof because of it. And you must fight against that tonight and tomorrow at the polls. Can't take a chance with that little madman. And the thing that bothers me most of all is that he and mask are arrogant as hell. I don't understand this thing. The head of the World Bank ain't know how to solve the world problem. The head of the IMF don't know. 
Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, don't know. They got about 4,500 Nobel Prize winners up there. In America, Obama got about 15 Nobel Prize winners up there. They may know. But in Barbados, we got two men who know how to solve the world problem. Huh? We got two men. One is a drunkard. And one is an ass. Them ain't got one clue about going on the world, but them know how to fix the world crisis. Never went no place at all and did nothing at all. All the number boys when they say no, but you know. I want to see my more ridiculous is this. Jamaica in recession in the IMF hand. St. Lucia in the IMF hand. Antigua in the IMF hand. Grenada in the IMF hand. Dominica in the IMF hand. Belize in the IMF hand. In all the Caribbean in the IMF hand. And Barbados out of the IMF hand. And they're telling you we're doing something wrong. I would have thought that basic common sense would say that if all the other countries in the hands of the IMF and we are not, that we're doing something wrong and they're doing something wrong. But they're telling you that we're doing something wrong. We're mismanaging the economy and we out the IMF hand. I just don't understand this thing. And as I said before, my mother doing it wrong. They got more madmen outside the inside JK's. Oh, it is one of them. Look. Let me give you another threat to you tonight. That I want you to listen to me very carefully. Because they're gonna trap Oinaza by his words. By his words, because I think he doesn't remember too well now. Oinaza was at he was at the 73rd Barbados Labour Party annual conference printed in the newspaper of October the 31st the nation newspaper 2011 this one afterwards listen me carefully and I quote the son of a book now he said if you are to pay more in the future for education and health care then let the government give you tax incentives so that you can do for yourself what the government used to do. Let me repeat it again. If you are to pay more for education and health care in the future, let the government give you tax incentives so that you can do for yourself what the government used to do. Let me analyze this statement. Now, do you now pay for the polytechnic? Do you know pay for community college? Do you know pay for the university? So if he is telling you that he can give you tax incentives for you to do for yourself what the government used to do, we're telling you. Put it back in then, and what are you going to see? And I did that. Everybody thought that he was drinking something white or brown and something went a little bit wild. He went to the Barbados Chamber of Commerce the week after and he told the businessmen in there that we have to cut that we have to cut expenditure in education and healthcare. We telling you. And I want you to remember that that is the same thing that made Romney and we had told Obama. Cut Medicare, cut Medicaid, cut education, get rid of all of them things. But they tell Obama, no, don't cut defense spending, cut the things for the poor people. Obama said, who are you talking to? We in Barbados now, the Honorable Prime Minister and this cabinet say, who you talking to? We protecting you. We ain't cutting education. We ain't cutting healthcare. We defending you straight through. Now, those three planks of Oinatha policy are cutting entitlements, education, healthcare, Cutting taxes, and the third one is privatization. Those are the same tactics that were used in the United States, and they were rejected by the Americans. You got to reject them tomorrow. Get out of your numbers tomorrow and reject them, because they are not in your interest, ladies and gentlemen. They are not in your interest.
let me tell you now how the Democratic Labour Party will carry you forward. As long as Barbados, the economy is structured in such a way that it depends on tourism for foreign exchange. As long as the economy is structured in such a way that it depends on international business for corporation taxes. As long as the economy is structured in such a way that trade through the port determines how much value added tax that Chris Sickler can get, Barbados will always be vulnerable to external recessions. What we, the Democratic Labour Party, is doing as we go forward and carry you into the next battlefront is that we are doing the diversification of the economy that Oinata should have done 14 years ago. And that diversification of the economy goes like this. For the first time in Barbados, we will be able now to reduce our oil or fuel import bill by about two or three hundred million dollars saving foreign exchange. How are we going to do this? The Honorable Dennis Law has the mangrove pond renewable energy center already out the tender. That renewable energy center is comprised of 24 acres of solar panels, 16 windmills, airways, the energy plant to take all of your garbage and convert the electricity. And we will take the methane gas for the landfill and we can produce energy from it. That one facility alone will produce 25 megawatts that will power 55,000 houses from renewable energy. That is how you diversify the economy on NASA. That's how you do it. We talk about diversifying, you talk about selling. We talk about diversifying, you talk about selling. We talk about renewing and diversifying the tourism product, cruise tourism, and separated crews from cargo. We are building a new cruise ship here to make sure that we now have an international standard cruise ship facility that may be second to none in the world. But we're not talking about selling the port. We talk about upgrading and uh, the, the container handling facility to make it the best in the world. Or we're not talking about selling the port. We're talking about increasing the competitiveness of trade in the port. Or we're not talking about selling the port. We're talking about diversifying trade in Barbados. Or we're not talking about selling the port. You got to understand the man's politics. And what is even critical in my area of agriculture, I have responsibility for the Barbados Cane Industry Restructuring Project. From that project alone, the new co-generation facility in Andrews will produce enough electricity to power another 55,000 homes of Barbados from sugarcane alone. That is how you diversify the economy. And I want anyone who is listening to me tonight to understand that this is how you save foreign exchange and reduce the oil import bill in the country. That will take the pressure off of tourism in the future so that your children and grandchildren will not have to deal with the effects of recessions because the tourists don't come here in Barbados. That is what we are trying to do. That is the way forward. Not or in other position, selling land building new hotels, selling condominiums, selling these bad looking deal, etc, etc. You must then decide where you vote tomorrow. If you vote for the same old economic policies, or you vote for a democratic Labour Party that is diversifying the economy and creating greater opportunities for you and your families. You know, what I'm also very concerned about, and, and I'm very serious about this one, huh? what I cannot like going out in the Barbados Labour Party is because they take you to be stupid. They think you ain't got the sense. A man will come and tell you, and Minister Sickness spoke to it tonight, that he is going to give back the clinical policy holders all the money. He said, that he is going to answer there are 35,000 of them. That is not true. The 35,000 that he speaks to 
includes our policy holders for the OECS. There are only about 13 to 14,000 local policy holders in Barbados. And Minister Sigler is absolutely correct. Do not buy it or not to tell you that he can, we can break for ourselves and leave the OECS. It cannot be done like that because the OECS countries invested the pension plans in Barbados. So I want you to understand the issues and do not get tired up when it comes out here telling the lies as per usual. We are going to have a plausible solution and that solution was articulated by both Minister Sickler and the Prime Minister. I want policyholders to hold on. Do not be hungry and don't sell yourself short and give one another vote when I know you know that he can't find seven or eight hundred million dollars to give back one cent. He can't find it. And all I can ask you to do for me this evening is defend this great party. We are called reckless because we defended you. We kept you, your jobs afloat. We kept the country stable. While we were stable, the mighty United States economy collapsed. Ireland collapsed. Greece collapsed, Spain collapsed, Iceland collapsed, Cyprus collapsed, and the list goes on. He goes about and telling you that we got downgraded to junk status. Every other country in the world got downgraded or not, you idiot. Barbados are the only one, we are in a recession, you think we stupid? A downgrade don't mean nothing. All it really means is that you got to pay a little bit more for the, for, for the money. But I have responsibility for cyber projects and they are no short of investors at all. So don't get them come out here and tell you about the nonsense. The fact of the matter is that Owen Arthur and the BLP could not have managed this recession any better than the Democratic Labour Party. That's the fact of the matter. And I stand with this great party because we have done and made the right choices. If we had gone austerity in Europe, you would be walking on the streets. But we decided to hold you together, keep your salaries and wages, keep the schools and all the social services operating. How could we be so bad? How could we be reckless for keeping you afloat to pay and take care of your children? How could we be reckless for that? Well, if that is what recklessness is, well, all we can be reckless morning, noon, and night. Because it is you that we are protecting and defending. And I can only say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the decision tomorrow is one about the future of the country. It is not about whether you like the BLB or you don't like the DLB. Whether you like red shirt men or red teeth men. It ain't about that. It is about whether or not Barbados will hold its own based on the policies and choices of the BLP and DLP. I have already shown you that if you take the BLP policy of stimulating the economy, you run the risk of devaluing the dollar. Don't take that chance. I have already showed you that if you go the privatization route, it has the fundamental risk of worsening the recession for the simple reason that privatization is job losses. When you have job losses, more people are unemployed, less money spending in society, and therefore it can worsen the recession. See, two economic realities. The third one, is the one on downsizing and entitlements. Do not let Oenatha play with healthcare and education and make your children pay for the community college, polytechnic, etc. Why I am angry about it is because Oenatha grew up in St. Peter and Ramshaw. He benefited from free secondary education. He benefited from community college and university and got a master's degree. And now that he has got on what he wanted. He wanted to kick down the ladder so that other poor people children can use education to uplift themselves. A dastardly act. Dangerous man. And you must send a message to him tomorrow. The people in Boscobel, people in Black Best, come out and put some top on the side of the road and turn it black. He must lose his seat tomorrow. And if you got friends in St. Peter, call them out. If you can go down there and bring people out for the polls, go down there and help. Here's the man. He got to go. 
he got to go and I am only going to finish up by telling you two things about me and Motley and that man look me and Motley nice lady she is I know about the party that went at somebody house I know about the naked women. I can say what I don't say. I know about the naked women up there. And those who had on a mask, like a masquerade. I know what went on up there in my constituency. Don't come back. Don't come back. I warn you tonight. Carry some place else. Carry your fist on the place else. Don't come back. I don't want to go send my dog on you. One of all these people somewhere. Think I'm gonna act first, man. I am not the one who said you had demons. It's one other who said, "Well, she needs to go and get assistance. Um, she has demons, and and her behavior needs some addressing. So she needs to take a rest." I don't say that. Or another said that, and he's the one who appointed her. But I know what happened in my constituency. Cause I gypsy, I know everything up there. And I don't want to tell her tonight. Don't come back up there and do the things. Don't do it. Cause my galaxy ain't like them sort of you know. <laughs> but the issue that I'm raising here is serious because it comes to character. And when you have two leaders who one can't tell the other one come back, you got a problem. We ain't got no problem from that strut. A decent man. A committed man. An honorable man. A man with no vice. A man who stands up and treats his cabinet with respect. He has never raised his voice to any of us or castigated us, even though sometimes we may do things that deserve it. He has never cursed one of us that you can't say about Owen Arthur is character, is a character assassination. Owen is the only prime minister that fires six ministers. Six. In the seven years. Don't forget the fire one on top him. George Bean. Tell them. Um George brought that George Bean. Liz Thompson. I top him. That's a six. This is the man. There's the same man that when St. Ford refused to give up her seat for the Bascal. A woman who is a loyal 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 politician and the Bible of a party and he can't get his way this man went and called that woman a most degrading a debased statement that she is an old chattel house on prime real estate a common thing to say about a decent woman that's the man when i want to bring back that's the man who went to parliament and told the journalists don't forget terry ali called him a sick uh, illiterate intention servant and then went and got the record changed when I want he back away that's the man that when the pop off girls were formed in Lickini Tail Billy Liz St. Yvonne and Mia remember he had to go to Obia Man near Greasy Black Monday in Orleans to save his ass but Patrick, I don't know what you're talking about. Greasy man, a greasy. A older man, a greasy. And the advice was, get rid of Liz. And he fired Liz. And he answered and sweetened Billy Miller out and make sure senior minister. Understand? That is the character of the man. That is the character of the man. Apart from taking checks and putting them in his accounts. On election day. And turning around and giving contracts to banks that gave him the checks. That's the character of the man. But I don't I, I don't drive a tractor down by your by your and blow your backyard. And when I don't blow your backyard, I get there owing plants some nutritious food in there. And start eating some of that bad food. You will stop talking about rubbish. I want to understand the character of the man. In addition to the character of the man, this is the man that gave Brandon Stroke the, the letter 
about getting rid of Liz Thompson. That father is drunk, made public. Get rid of Mia. Tell him, take Mia off of his hand. Yeah? That is the character of the man. And I want you to understand that that's a man who wants to lead the country. A man who is uncouth, bad behaved, ill tempered, and a dishonorable individual. And you must not take the chance of putting power back in his hand. Put the power in the hands of the alternative. A wonderful human being. A human being of class and substance. Not owing Seymour Arthur. Look, there's one more thing I want to say to you as I wind up. And that is this. If you take the error of putting Oenatha in office tomorrow, I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that this country will fall off the cliff. I want to ask you whose advice do you accept? Do you accept the eminent advice of the central bank governor, who is a world and well renowned economist? Or do you accept the advice from two donkeys near Owen and Maskell? I am asking you tonight to accept the advice of the central bank governor accept the advice and the positions articulated by this cabinet and true minister Sittler. those pieces of advice were sound do not take the chance of taking advice from Owen and Maskell who has never in their life managed a serious recession once they have never managed a recession of this magnitude the only little glimpse of a recession that they had was in 2001 after the 9-11 crashes. And there was no deep recession in Europe. America went into recession, came back up quickly. Owen had never managed anything in his life. He can't even manage the blasted marriage. And you're going to make the mistake of putting him in office. We are still in the crisis. And we now need sound management that is what the central bank governor brings minister sickler and this cabinet and i can only ask you again ladies and gentlemen that tomorrow we turn this cabinet back to base street we turn this cabinet back to base street but i want to ask you i say to you this is the democratic labor party time whose time is it the Democratic Labour Party time. Whose time it is tomorrow? The Democratic Labour Party time. And I want you to say by your vote tomorrow, Owen Arthur, this is the Democratic Labour Party time. Back in office again. I want you to go early in the morning. Vote early. Vote from morning to night. Bring your grandmother and grandfather. Bring your sister and your brother. Get the wheelchairs ready. Bring some grease crystals and spray for the wheels. And bring them out. Bring them out because you're defending the interests of the country now. The interests of the country now. Put Barbados first, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to do that for me. Do that for me tomorrow. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate being here with you. Ladies and gentlemen,